In this video, we will be talking about Swift Assist or the ChatGPT integration in Xcode 26. So first of all, you of course have to download Xcode 26 and you can either do that via the Apple developer website if you are logged in or you can use Xcodes.app, which is a nice little tool to manage different Xcode versions on your Mac. Once you have it installed on macOS Sequoia or another operating system, then you will notice that this section over here simply isn't there. And that's because this requires macOS Tahoe, so the macOS 26 beta version. Now I have installed that beta version on this uh, Mac and it's actually pretty stable so far. So I have only run, run into issues with QuickTime player so far and everything else seems to work. Though of course you need to know that if you install the macOS beta, then you will not be able to upload archives to App Store Connect through Xcode. Of course, you can still use Xcode Cloud to do that instead. But just keep in mind that updating your Mac means you can't upload archives to App Store Connect. And then as well, you will need to have Apple Intelligence installed and the model downloaded on your Mac. So that means that your system language and your Siri language need to be the same, which is always an issue for me as my system is English and Siri is usually set to my native language, German. But uh, I have changed it to English to use these Apple Intelligence features here, but that's also something to keep in mind for yourself if you don't have the same language for your system and for Siri. All right, so then if you have both of these things set up and you have opened Xcode 26, then you now have these two tabs here. So you have the regular old tab with the file explorer, source control navigation, bookmarks, search, and so on. But then you can also switch here to the coding assistant. And in here we have conversations just like we have in tools like Alex Sidebar, Cursor, or even just ChatGPT's work with Xcode feature. If you don't have an OpenAI account, you can still use this feature with ChatGPT, but you will have a limit of probably something like 10 to 15 messages per day. Now, I'm not entirely sure about that. So if you know more about these limits, then please make sure to leave a comment down below. And if it's correct, I'll pin the comment so everyone else can see. So if you're interested in that, check the comments below. But then you can also just open the Xcode settings and under intelligence here, you will see the coding intelligence tab and in the second row, ChatGPT and Xcode, you can then log in with your ChatGPT Pro account and that way you can increase your daily limit. Now I've heard that it's 25 messages per day, but I haven't tried to exhaust it yet, so I'm not entirely sure. All right, so the cool thing about this is of course that it can look up code in your entire repository or in this entire Xcode project, so you don't have to tell it exactly where to look for something. So in this video, we will go through two different use cases just to get a first understanding of how well this works. The first use case is to implement an app from scratch. So we will implement the classic to-do app using Swift data. And then after that, we will iterate on that app with our second use case where we tell it to refactor it from away from Swift data and instead to save the data to a local JSON file instead. So we can get started here in message JetGPT and let me just quickly write up a prompt so we can save some time. All right, so the prompt that I wrote is, I want you to create a simple app using Swift data. Users should be able to add to-dos, save to Swift data and view them in a list. This should be a single screen app. Implement a swipe action on the list items to delete a to-do. Make sure you only use system components. So let me hit enter and then we will see what happens. So we can already see that our message gets truncated here and I don't like that. So I hope that in a future version, you are able to see the entire message. And then it always starts by giving its plan and giving itself more, uh, yeah, more context on what to do. So here it says, here's my plan, add a Swift data model for a to-do item, update content view to use the Swift data context, display to-dos in a list, allow adding to-dos and support swipe to delete. So this sounds pretty good. Use only system UI components like list, text feed and button. That also looks good. Make all code, make all code changes inside contentview.swift for a single screen app. And we could even click here to open contentview.swift. Since the Swift data model should be in the same file for simplicity. Okay, I didn't tell it to put it in the same file. So uh, I'm not sure if it can even create new files. We could perhaps explore that later on. 
I will add the to-do model at the top, then update the view to allow adding and viewing to-dos and implement a swipe to delete action. All right, then it updates content view and then it tells me what exactly it changed. So let's have a look over here. And first thing, of course, that I see is a bunch of error messages here. So uh, let's see what the issue is there in a second. And I can also see that there's an import Swift data at the top and then there's import Swift UI in line 13. So this isn't an error, but it's not nice. And we can see content view initializers inaccessible due to private protection level. And we will generate a fix for this issue in just a second. So we can see there's apparently a preview container. I've never seen this before, so no idea why this is used, perhaps, okay, it's used in the preview, then I would probably put it down here as well, but okay, not, not an issue, just not clean code in my opinion. Then it's using a model container for to do to itself, which is an identifiable model it created with a unique ID and a title string. So that also looks good. And then in our content view, we can see it's grabbing the model context. So it is using Swift data. Then we have a query for our to-dos. There's also an issue here, cannot convert value of type key path root value to expected element type. Okay, yeah, so it's trying to use a key path here, but it needs to use a um, sort descriptor, of course, from Swift data. We have a text field, we have a button that's disabled. All right, so the rest doesn't look too bad. It's also a bit clunky, could be cleaned up a little bit. So let's start by fixing these issues. So first issue is pretty simple. The content view is unavailable because of this private initializer here. I don't even know why it's private. So let's see, now we have an empty init here. I actually think this isn't an issue. It's just because this query isn't uh, compiling and that's why it thinks that there's a private variable here because it doesn't know what the query is supposed to do. So let's next generate a fix for this sort descriptor issue here. And there we can see it's already looking at the before and after. And there we can see it's now using a sort descriptor. So this issue should be away as well. So let me try to compile this app here. Okay, build succeeded. So let's open it in the preview. Okay, we can add a new to-do. So let's say dummy to-do. Let's hit the plus button and see what happens. It does get added to the list. Okay, that's pretty good. But of course, I don't know if this is saved to Swift data. So let's quickly have a look in the app. Add to-do, trims white space and new lines from the title. That's good. And it does actually insert it into the context. And delete to do's probably also works. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. So it actually was able to implement, of course, this is a very simple feature, but it was able to implement a new feature using Swift data without too many instructions. And it was also able to fix both of the issues that it ran into, even though I'm not sure that this init is actually needed. So let's try to get rid of it. Yeah, it's not needed. So this still compiles without it. And of course, we can see import statements aren't glued to the top. This preview container doesn't really make sense because we could just have these two lines right inside of the preview. So of course, things could be optimized, but this is a good starting point for a new feature. All right, so now let's head into example number two, where we will tell ChatGPT or Swift Assist to refactor this to get rid of Swift data and instead save this data to a local JSON file. All right, so I just told it to change my architecture, get rid of Swift data entirely, and instead use the JSON file architecture. So once again, it tells me its plan and goes through it in detail, and then it's updating content view for me. So let's see what happens here. Also very nice that we always have these little boxes here to highlight model changes and previous changes as well. So we can see that Swift data isn't imported anymore. We have removed the add model macro here. Not really sure if we actually need this in it. I think we could get rid of it, but our to do is now codable. We now have a to do's file URL. On up here, to do's are loaded. So let's see what happens there. We get the files URL. No idea why it creates a second URL here. 
probably because this is static, but then again, why is this static? It loads the data and decodes it. That looks pretty good. Same with saving the to-dos. That also looks pretty good. Deleting looks good and adding probably also looks good. Yeah, it does save in here. So let's try this out as well in our preview here. So I will once again create a dummy to do. Hit the plus button. It does get saved to the list and we can also delete it. So I'm not going to test this in the simulator now because the implementation does look good to me. But this goes to show that even a bit more of a complex refactor here where we exchanged an entire piece of the architecture, not just a feature, does actually work quite well with this new ChatGPT integration. So in summary, there's four more things I want to tell you. First thing is this is incredibly fast, especially compared to using ChatGPT's work with feature or some of the other apps out there to do things like this. The Xcode integration is very fast. And my guess is that everything up here is actually run on the local Apple intelligence model and only the code changes are run on ChatGPT. But of course, I don't know how this is implemented under the hood. This is just my guess as to why it's so fast. One issue that I have with this is that it's not trained on the Apple documentation. So this is just a standard open AI model here. So it does not know about all of the new APIs from WWDC 25. And I think this is a very big oversight here. I think this should have been included for sure. It is very nicely integrated into Xcode. I always like first party solutions because I don't have to open a second app engine can just keep using the tools that I already know, which is Xcode. So all in all, I think this is a very, very good first step. It makes it a lot easier to get started with AI vibe coding in Xcode, but this is not the time yet to abandon other tools like Alex sidebar, cursor or ChatGPT's work with feature. So let me know what you think about Swift Assist and Xcode's ChatGPT integration in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video.